Hey everyone, this is Lisa from Life in Layouts and today I am back with my Muggles Wizarding Adventures. Of course, I'm going to pull out my Echo Park Witches and Wizards collection. And I also decided to pull out this Scrapbook Generation sketch. This is sketches with three by four photos. It is 10 sketches and it only has three by four photos. This layout is going to be about the queue into Hagrid's motorbikes. The queue itself, you walk through Hagrid's yard. So you get to see his hut as well as some of his collections. Let's just put it that way. And I wanted to document these photos because I don't know that I've seen a lot of photos with the queue line. I pulled out the pumpkin paper because I felt like that was just perfect for Hagrid's hut. When I think of Hagrid's hut, I think of pumpkins. There were a couple of scenes from the books where there were lots of pumpkins in his yard. I took a ton of photos and I'm actually going to end up using two flip flaps on this layout. And with the flip flaps, I will be able to get a total of 12 photos on this layout. Down at the bottom, underneath the pumpkins, I pulled out this paper. It is not from the Echo Park line. I actually was recently going through some of my paper in my room and I had found some other Harry Potter items. And this particular paper has different types of bottles on it, as well as some skulls. And I felt like the darkness of that paper, along with the pumpkin paper, worked really well. I also pulled out two tone on tone solid colors. At the top, I have a green tone on tone stripe. And then between the pumpkin paper and that darker paper, I have a orange piece of cardstock that is embossed with polka dots. And I added the green to the top to kind of mimic like the top of a pumpkin. And then I really thought that the orange separated the pumpkin and that darker paper really well. So I measure out the paper so that I can have the same amount of distance on the top and bottom of the layout. And then I adhered the paper down. The strips of paper are nine inches because I'm going to have three three by fours, which that equals up to nine. So the papers and the photos line up. Let me know in the comments below, have you guys ridden Hagrid's motorbike? And what are your thoughts? We have ridden it a couple of times, obviously when we went here for Eli's birthday, but then we've also been back to Universal a couple of other times and rode it as well. And I really enjoy the ride. I do get motion sickness, so I do have a tendency to not enjoy those types of rides. If you have not ridden Hagrid's motorbike, just know that there are like two places that you can sit, on the motorbike or in the sidecar. The first time that I rode it with Eli for his birthday, I was in the sidecar and he was on the motorbike. I did not enjoy that. The second time that I rode it, I was like, I want to see how it feels to ride the motorbike. You can ride the sidecar. So we switched spots and I enjoyed that much better. It helped a lot with my motion sickness to be able to have the control of the bike, even though I'm not really moving the bike. Just being able to hold the handlebars and kind of grasp the side of the motorbikes with my legs, it just felt better and I did not have the same kind of issues that I had when I rode in the sidecar. So let me know in the comments below. If you have ridden it, did you enjoy it? Were you able to ride both the motorbike and the sidecar? And which one did you enjoy most? So I've gotten the photos down and also put photos in the flip flaps. I'm gonna put one flip flap on each side of the layout to kind of balance that out. And then I also have two four by three photos that I'm gonna to add to the bottom left-hand side. They look very similar and they really are. They're just two different angles of all of the items that Hagrid has collected. So I did put one down flat and I put fun foam on the other one to just give it a little bit of dimension. And then I started to pull out some of the embellishments to add to the layout, but remembered that I wanted to stitch on this layout. I did not do a lot of stitching on this layout. I added a row on the pumpkins, and then at the top, I also added a row above the green tone on tone paper. And then I also am going to add a row between the two darker pieces. So between the paper, 
that has all of the bottles on it as well as the skulls. I did realize as I was stitching that my photos and papers didn't line up, so I did use my X-Acto knife just to trim that off. And then I pulled out my threads to match up with the green as well as the orange, and then down at the bottom I added the black thread. And I do use a six strand embroidery thread. It is linked below. I have an Amazon storefront that is all of my stitching supplies. So you can take a look there for the embroidery thread, the needles that I use, my needle threaders, as well as even that little 10 box that's magnetic. And I love that thing. Do know that it is an affiliate link. So if you click on it, I do get a small commission, but there's no additional charge for you. I did add a back stitch to this layout, which is just basically a straight stitch where you are stitching along the layout and going back to the previous hole. I also tie knots on the back of my layouts. I used to add washi tape to the back of it, but I just prefer to make a little knot, kind of braiding it a little bit, and I haven't had any issues with that. I did slow the video down here so that you can see the stitching that I added, and it was just the three rows in the green, orange, and black at the very bottom. And I think that it adds just enough that it really sets this layout apart. Now my title is going to be Beyond Hagrid's Hut because these photos are obviously of his hut, but then there's also his like yard and other areas where he keeps his dragon eggs and things that he probably shouldn't have. So I pulled out my dies and I'm going to do some dickers. The word beyond is in a Harry Potter font and then Hagrid's hut is in my very favorite font from scrapbook.com. I will link it below if you would like to pick it up. I do stack them too high with the white cardstock and then I did pull out my pattern paper in the my very favorite wood grain to add to the top of it. When I laid the title down on the pumpkins, I felt like it was getting lost. So I decided to pull out my distress ink and add that to the edges, thinking that that would help it stand out. And it did look a lot better than without the inking, but it was still really hard to see. So then I thought, well, maybe I'll back the letters in an orange. And so I pulled out this scrap that I had and I was looking at the letters and it just didn't add enough dimension. So then I thought I would do the green tone on tone and I wasn't hundred percent sure that it would work well. So I decided to cut the letter out in orange as well and then test it out. And what I decided to do was a drop shadow. I only have one size of these letters. I don't have a shadow for these particular dies. So a drop shadow is moving the bottom layer down and to the left just a little bit to cause it to have a shadow. I did feel like the green worked better. It stood out more against the orange pumpkin paper. So I went ahead and cut out all of the letters in the green and then using my mat again, I feel like the mat is almost like a second hand to help me keep everything together. As I was putting the green letters down, I realized that two of my letters, the H and the D, I had turned them a different way than the other letters to kind of save paper on the wood grain. Just so you know, wood grain does have a direction. So I had to recut the H and the D because they were going sideways while all of the other wood grains were going up and down. Take my advice. <laughs> Keep all of your letters in the same way. I get all of the green paper down and I really like the way that it looks with the drop shadow. This is something that I'll keep in mind for future layouts as well, because I do feel like it does add just an extra little touch to the layout. Now I did have two pieces of white cardstock, the top piece, as well as the green. If I do this in the future, I will probably eliminate one of the white pieces in the center because my letters are very, very thick. Because the A has a downward slope as well as the G, I started to stagger my letters in the word Hagrid. And I feel like it gives it a whimsical look, which is very similar to what Hagrid is. Then I start to embellish and I really just pulled out any of the embellishment pieces that I thought would work for Hagrid. Over on the far left, I have a circle that says 100% pure magic. 
up in the upper right, I have a little square that says witchcraft and wizardry. And I also added a green tag that has an owl on it. I always think of Hagrid when I think of owls because Hagrid gave Harry his first owl. I also added a pumpkin over to the left hand side. I do have some navy strips that I've cut out and I keep them on my desk as placements so that I can get an idea of where I can put my embellishments. So I added those strips down knowing that my journaling would be somewhere in that area so that I could make my embellishments around it. I pulled out my color boxes in orange and added some orange brads to each one of the clusters. I really only have the two main clusters in the bottom left and the top right. I also pulled out my color box in green and added those as well as my wood grain color boxes and added a couple of stars in the wood grain. And then I just pulled out the sticker sheet trying to find other little tiny embellishments. I was able to find a couple of potion bottles as well as bats, a little skull, some lightning bolts, and a little black cauldron. And then over on the left, I did add a little wand. Even though Hagrid's not supposed to have a wand, he does. I really wanted to make this broom work. And again, I pulled out my strips trying to figure out where I could put my strips of journaling. And I just didn't like the broom underneath the word Hagrid with my journaling being in that area. So I pulled up the broom and added it above the word Hagrid. And I like it much better up there, but I did feel like it needed something else. So I went back to the sticker sheet and I found a little bat to add up there as well. And then that is it for this video. Here is my final layout as well as some close-ups. At the very end of the video, I will link the playlist for my Wizarding Muggles adventures. You guys can check that out if you would like to see more layouts in regards to our trip to Universal's Wizarding World of Harry Potter. If you enjoyed this video, if you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. If you haven't done so already and you want to see more double page layout inspiration, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope that you have a scrappy day.